spirit, oh God. Let there be a word that come forth, oh God, to heal, set free, and deliver, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we just thank and praise you for the prophetess of this house, oh God, our diamond, oh God, our diamond visionary, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank and praise you, Father God, for her help meet, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. We thank and praise you for the women of new restoration, oh God. Use us like you never have before, oh God. And we just thank and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, good morning, precious people. How are you this morning? Amen. Come on, give God some praise. So now, because it's few in numbers, I'm going to ask that y'all can save y'all seats if y'all put your hats or whatever on, the t on there. But can you please move up to like the first two rows? Amen. Thank you for your obedience. Welcome to our Diamonds Form. Amen. 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 God bless you. And I, I am so excited because today I have these beautiful women of God that's up here with me. And we're just going to talk a little bit. We've got some kind of questions that we're going to ask. And so I asked two, two young ladies that's in the audience that they have some cue cards. And with those cards, um, she's gonna pass, they're going to pass it out to you. And with those cards, we're going to ask you to write down different things that um, what to go with the questions that I'm asking on this morning. And so uh, when, once you write it down, you're going to come up and you're going to place them face down on the stage. We're not going to look at them, not going to read them, but we're going to allow the Lord to have his way. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, ladies, I have a number of questions, and I know some of you don't really know what I'm going to ask this morning, and this is the best part. So, I'm going to ask a number of questions, and with these questions, I want you to just kind of elaborate on either your uh, experience or uh, what the Word of God says. Some things that you can encourage, you can uplift, and you can talk to the women of God about. it, Amen. Amen. So first question I'm going to ask is, what does healing mean to you personally? And what areas of your life do you feel you need healing? So I'm going to ask Sister Bonnie first. Make sure your mic is on. Amen. Good morning, Amen. saints. Um, when I think of healing, um, from my personal experience, healing in my body is when I'm going through, I give God back his word, put a scripture on it. Um, I apologize. What does healing mean to you personally? Oh, healing, total deliverance, healing in my body, my mind, my soul, giving it all to God, whatever it is that I need healing from, whether it's dealing with uh, certain situations that I'm going through, uh, and trusting and believing God that he's able to do it. Amen. 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 And so what areas of your life do you feel you have the need of healing? Sister Pam. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, areas of healing to me would be, um, if I think about it hard, <laughs> um, I needed healing from forgiveness, um, pack part, parts of my life, um, I didn't let go of some things, uh, but until I let it go, mm -hmm. now I'm walking into my healing now. Amen. Amen. What do you think about it, Melissa? I think about the, um, I have, from experience, I have um, PTSD, and I, I'm healing from thinking negative thoughts and just really giving those negative thoughts to the Lord. Um, something so minute can be so big and drastic to me and it takes me out. So my healing and my journey right now is definitely um, healing from PTSD and hypertension. Um, I refuse to be medicated. Amen. I want to give it to God and I know God is going to take care of it without any medication. Amen, amen, praise God. 
Amen. So now the next question, I'm going to direct this over to Sister Connie. How do you maintain balance and prioritize your own needs while caring for others in your life? Wow. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God is so amazing. That is certainly an area that I fight with on a daily um, balance um, with home, um, work, my family, my husband, my daughter. Oh my gosh. Amen. Praise God. I go before the Lord. I have to. I have to run before God and I have to get in his face first before I can make anything else happen. Mm. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. And Thera, what do you think about it? Amen. Good morning. Balance. Uh, like Sister Connie said, I start my morning off talking to the Lord. And that helps me balance out my day between my family. And although my kids are grown, but I still have grandkids. And then I take care of my mom. And so I'm running here and there and church. Mm -hmm. So I have to balance that out because I have my family, I have my mom, I have church. And so if I go before the Lord in the morning and pray and allow him to direct my day, then everything else balance out. That's how I cope with balancing my day. Amen. 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 So the next question is, I'm going to direct this to LaToya. What strategies or practices have you been most effective for in overcoming past traumas and challenges? <laughs> I just asked her, could I leave now? My strategy, could you repeat that again? I'm going to try. Okay, let's see. What strategies or practices have you been most effective for you in overcoming past traumas or challenges? be honest because dad had talked on a message about reset and I mentioned to one of the sisters yesterday that I had to reset for a reason because in your you can say all day long you trust and believe God but internally when your heart is not matching up what you see or what you say it can be it can be a, a I mean a long journey so what I've been using and saying to myself every day over and over I trust and believe God. I'm not going to get emotional, but you really have to know within your own self, and it has nothing to do with people, but within your own self and believe what God says. It doesn't matter how long it takes, but my strategy has been every day, and it's been a journey to trust and believe what God says. Our journeys are not all the same. They're all different, and they all carry different weight. But you have to know without a shadow of a doubt that you trust and believe God all the way. Mm. So that's what I've been using every day. That's strategy every day. Believe what he said and what he told me and what his word says and what we have been taught and what we can learn from each other. So that's what I've been doing. Wow. And overcoming life trials, tribulations, uh, mishaps, you know, it's all about believing. And do you believe and do you know that he can do it if he did it for that? Amen. He can do it for this. Amen. So Amen. constantly Amen. I reset every day to believe and know that God is who he is regardless. Amen. 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 I kind of want to linger on that question. Is anybody else on the panel that want to want to elaborate? Sharan? Amen. I agree. Um, the tasks every day, the challenges every day, 
you have to believe that God will bring you through. Amen. You have to just fall on your face, on your knees, whatever it is, whatever it takes to get through. Sometimes you might get weary and well-doing, but God said, keep pushing, mm. keep pushing. I'm mm. extending my hand to you. Mm. I am extending you. I am lifting you up. So you just have to be prayerful and careful, especially dealing with family, children. You, you know, you just, you know, have to be, you know, prayerful. Amen. And just keep, continue to seek God. Amen. Amen. What do you think, Jennifer? I would say, for me, and from experience for myself, is stepping back and analyzing the situation. Mm -hmm. um, as most of us said, prayer is always the most important thing to start with. And then also analyzing that, I had to learn that everybody else's problem is not a weight on me. Oh. So therefore, those strategies that you use and the trauma, because some of that can lead from you taking on other people's problems, mm -hmm. whether it's your family, whether it's your right. children. Mm -hmm. And so learning from that, the strategy is, is not my problem. That's it. I'm going to pray for you. And I'm going to let God do mm -hmm. what he needs to do. Right. So therefore, that's taking the stress and everything off of me. And I don't have to worry about praying extra hard and stressing out over things that's going on. Amen. Mm. Amen. 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 I, I'm just stuck on this question. What do you think, Bonnie? Amen. Standing on God's word. Numbers 23 and 19, been in my spirit all week, that God is not a man, that he should lie. And I thank and praise God because even though I don't see it, I'm continuing to stand and believe Amen. his word because I know God is able. And even all the series that has been going forth, I began to write them down and I began to get up in the morning and study and meditate on them. And I just asked God, God, show me what it is that I need to do because I don't want to do nothing out of your will. And I just thank and praise God because everything that he does for us, even though we may be going through and it be painful, it's a purpose. Amen. Amen. And I thank Amen. and praise God for his purpose. Yes. Amen. 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 Sister Pam, what do you think? Well, I knew you was going to call me. <laughs> <laughs> um, this year, became a year where I took back um, life. Um, everybody said a piece of what's, what I do on a daily. So being on the ministry and learning and studying the word of God and trusting his word, I literally tackle things as though he already done fixed it. Amen. He already had my back. So I'm like a mad woman, like, you said in your word, Lord. Mm -hmm. This, 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 and I just go walk. Mm -hmm. I don't doubt it anymore. I don't question him no more. Mm -hmm. I just go. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you it works itself out, I'll be like, you did that. Yeah, At the end sir. of the day, yes, I sir. always tell him, you did that for me. Because you get challenged, right? And there are strategies you're supposed to use to kind of not react, right? Yes. And we have to be careful how we respond, because there's a difference. So right now, when I tell you my victory came on Friday, something I was battling with for seven months on my job. Wow. And I stayed in the Word, and God told me Friday morning, I saw your tears, mm. I heard your prayers. He said, now you're in your victory. Come on, and it now. happened too. Wow. So I'm going to keep on doing what I'm doing. Right. Okay, I'm going to keep on trusting him and moving like a train and never look back come on. at a situation because he already worked it out. Come on, come on. Amen, amen. Sister Connie, you want to elaborate? You know, the Bible talks about giving thanks in all things, um, big and small. And I've been learning to give God thanks for my trials, my tribulations, um, not just for the good things, you know, that happen, but I've been giving him thanks for the issues. Mm -hmm. um, and what Sister Pam was saying, thanking him in advance for what he's going to do. So I'm thanking him for the, the bad times, thanking yes. him for the good things. Mm -hmm. Woo. Yes. And I'm thanking him for what he's about to do. Yes. Thank Yes. yes, amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 Sister Melissa. 
if walking by faith and not by sight was a person, that would be me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I reiterate that to myself every day. I wake up and I look at myself in the mirror and I say, you walk in my faith and not by sight. I say, no matter what's going on in this world, no matter what's going on in this crazy mind of yours that the devil tries to take from you, you have to believe that God has got your back. God has got your best interest. God has never ever since I was a child has ever left me nor forsaked me. And it's a matter of, no matter what things look like in your life, your bank account can be at a zero. Your life could be turned off. You're wondering how you're gonna feed yourself. But God will bring somebody Come to say, would you, watch some, would you like some lunch? Or we energy said, you know what, we can put you on a payment plan. Or your mortgage just got dropped $200. Like, and you, you, God is our provider, and we have to just continue to remember that even in the midst of the worst times of our lives. And I just continue to tell myself, God, I know you got me. You got me. You got my family. You got my children. All this crazy stuff that's going on in this world. Like, I just look at my kids, and I pray over my children and my grandchildren daily, and I just know that God's got me. Mm -hmm. He's never left me nor forsaked me. And I just thank God that he's put me in a position where I can look back for the, for the last nine months and say, my gosh, mm -hmm. you've lost so much, but look how much you've gained now in a matter of just by trusting him. Come on. All he needs to do is just, you know, just, just trust him just a little bit and, and put that word back on him. Like you said, like you said this, you said this, now what about this? Mm -hmm. And I do that. And when I started doing that, things just started falling in place. Wow. And I just, I just thank God for Everything that I've been through this last year, my losses, everything, because now I'm just at a position where I say, God did it. Come on. God did it. Come I'm on. so proud to say, God did this. I like I could not have done it without my faith. There's no way I would have been able to make it this past year without my faith. My God. Come on. Give God some praise. No way. No way. That is awesome. That is awesome. So now, what advice would you give other women? Hmm. Sister Body, what advice would you give other women who just began their journey towards healing or self-discovery? I know it'd be easy to say be strong and be encouraged because even while we trying to be strong and going through, uh, we're gonna come up against many trials and tribulations, but I would encourage them to hold on even though they're going through and they can't see it. Wow. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Absolutely. Amen. Sister Jennifer, what do you think? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Amen. So I would say, as advice would be, is along with that holding on, even when you're stuck, keep going. Keep moving because it's, don't let your past define your future. So you're stuck in a rut where you're like, okay, which way should I go? What should I do? And also along with that, it, you know, like you said, it's easy to say pray, but when you're stuck, you're, the prayer don't seem like it's working. So I would tell my sister, hey, hold on. Just hold on a little bit longer. Because God, those promises that he promised you, he will provide for you. And if he's going to be your comforter, your healer, your strengthener, provide you peace. Just hold on a little bit longer because God is able to do all things. Amen. You gotta fight. Amen. What did you say? You gotta fight. You gotta fight your way through it. You have to. You can't give up. You can never ever give up. You gotta fight no matter mm. what. Come on. Amen. Come on. Yes. It's hard. God showed me a vision. I, he showed me like the movie Rocky. Like I went through all this stuff and at the end it's like, okay, we're done. You're good. You won. Now let's reward you. Mm. You know, because I fought a battle. Not only a spiritual battle, but a physical battle, a mental battle, an emotional battle. And God was with me the whole time. Fear, wow. everything. He, he put me in a situation where my biggest fear, he put me in. And I'm not afraid no more. Amen. He put me in situations where I had to overcome being in the dark, literally in a dark place. But I saw the light. Wow. And God was my light. Yes. Like he, I could actually see things when it was dark out. I'm like, wow, I can see. You know, and that's God showing me, like, I got you, Melissa. Mm -hmm. Don't be scared. I'm here. I put you here for a reason, mm -hmm. you know. And just certain things that I've been able to minister to women and say, you don't have to be afraid. Just trust in God. Believe in God. Let me sit and talk to you. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't like to put my business out there, but 
you know, you gotta kind of have that fine line, but you just gotta encourage somebody and say, you know what, I've been through that. I've seen what you're going through. You know, I, how did you make it? God, mm -hmm. it, wasn't my, it wasn't medication, it wasn't a substance, it wasn't a person, it was the spirit of the Lord. And all I would keep asking God was, just don't leave me. And I would feel him every single day with me. Praise God, praise God. Anybody else want to elaborate? Can I say, Go ahead. when you're talking about how to encourage someone that's new to this, it's okay to be vulnerable. They need to know that. And they need to connect with someone that can show compassion. Yes. Compassion can't be taught. Okay, it's got to be requested from God, because I never had compassion. Mm -hmm. And I used to tell Carl Toya all the time, I didn't have compassion. Mm -hmm. And she said, that might be something you want to pray for, considering the journey you're about to go. And when I prayed that God would give me compassion, it has opened up so many doors where I can speak to other women. Amen. And sometimes women just need a hug. Yes. yes. And, and I, can I give you a hug? I hear the story. Mm -hmm. And then and do the encouragement like you all said. But they need to understand it's okay to be vulnerable without, without me judging you. So just that. Amen. Um, it is a journey um, in regards to my own self, trying to find your way in that journey and having compassion, the fight. I'll use the word for exist. For example, when you're in the, in the world and you just fight and you give it your all, it's different in the spirit realm, but it's more so on your knees. It's not a race whatsoever. And I would encourage a lot of young ladies on my job, you know, you don't have to clear your whole play out and just live so fully for God. Allow God to work on you and, and do surgery on you through the healing process because healing doesn't have a time frame. Everybody heals different. And I used to always tell them, being in ministry, I kept myself busy in the house of God and outside the house of God, kept my mind or, or read you know, scriptures to encourage me or you, or what I did 24 seven, I played worship music 365 days a year. And some other sisters can attest. That's what I did to keep my mind going and focus off of what I came out. Cause a lot of our traumas have been tremendous. And sometimes it's the sound and what you need to encourage you and music, certain worship music was healing for me. Wow. And every time I would play it up until this appointed time, it will take me back to what I used to do when I first started this journey with God, because Tess, I was not always in church, mm -hmm. but it was the tools that I used that would constantly help me through my healing process was certain worship music and trust in his word. Wow, wow. praise Amen. God, praise Amen. God. So now, what role does forgiveness play in healing, well, in the healing process for both oneself and for others. Amen. Sister Thera. Amen, forgiveness. That is so important. In order for you to heal, you have to forgive, because forgiveness is for you, not the other person. The other person is study going on, doing what they want to do, but you're still dwelling on it, and it's taunting you, so you have to forgive in order for you to go farther mm. and you will be able to encourage someone else that's going through that and come into the house of the Lord. That is so important. Amen. You know, being amongst other saints, other women that can encourage you and love on you, that's part of your healing and forgiveness. Amen. Amen. What do you think, Sister Sharon? Oh, what is the question? Okay, what role does forgiveness play in the healing process, both for oneself and for others? Well, for me personally, I um, had experienced where I thought I had forgave and gave it to God, but I found myself, when the situation arose again, getting more angrier. Mm. 
And I'm like, Lord, now I gave this to you. I've forgiven. Why am I still getting angry? But the thing was, I didn't let it go. Mm. So it manifested in harbor because it was laying dormant. Mm -hmm. So I had to get self out of the way and I let God come in and do what he needed to do. Mm -hmm. So I end up actually just letting it go, letting God have his way. Mm -hmm. And that dark place that I was walking around, it was like I was like a dark cloud over me. And I'm like, God, I know you're here. Mm -hmm. I know you're here, but, and I know that I have repented I know that I have forgiven and I gave it to you, but why am I still getting angry about this? Wow. So I really had to seek his face and repent and ask for forgiveness. And um, I, I could say the cloud is gone. Wow, praise The cloud God. is gone. Praise God, amen. amen. Now again, we have cue cards out that um, if you all, would like to write down things that the Lord has healed you from or things that you would like the Lord to heal you from. This is not something that is going to be read. We're not going to look at it, but this is something we want you to write down and then put it face down on the altar. Amen? Amen. Amen. Even up here, if you all feel that you have uh, one to need or something that you all want to write down to put it at the altar as well. Amen? Amen. So moving on. So now, how can the church community better support and comfort those who are experiencing hurt and emotional struggles? Amen. Sister Connie. Amen. Um, I think it, we are our sister's keepers, so I think it's very important to be able to um, you know, um, reach out, you know, in a text if we can. Um, sometimes just calling and just having that person to just kind of let, let out what needs to be let out. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes people just need an ear. Um, and then, um, you know, just keeping people, people in prayer and, and encouraging people to, to um, come out to the house of the Lord. Um, Amen. 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 So uh, what do you think about it, Melissa? Well, like um, Sister just said, be your sister's keeper. And that's one thing about our church is I'm proud of our church. Because no matter who comes through those doors, we welcome them. Amen. And we encourage them and we uplift them and we welcome them. And a lot of people that I know, you know, they, they, they don't go to church. They don't do church. But I explain to us, I explain to people in the community, like my, you know, we don't, you know, we don't like to compare churches, but I do compare churches because you can walk in here and you feel the spirit. Amen. This is a place of healing and deliverance. This is a hospital. Amen. This is this is where you know you can get fully delivered. You can be you can be excuse me, but a crackhead one day and come to New Rest and be saved the next day. You know. Amen. You could have HIV one day and be healed the next day. Come We've on. seen it. This is a beautiful place to come and I just thank God that we as women we all do come together Amen. because we live in a world where women don't like to hold you know uh, embrace one another. They feel co they're competitive with one another. But I like to tell everybody, you know what, the, the same God that did this for me can be the same God that's going to do that for you. Amen. Come to my church. Meet my pastors. Meet the women of God that are in my church. We will embrace you. We will love you. And we will help you through your process. Amen. 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 What do you think, Bonnie? Amen. I just piggyback off what my sister said. Um, being able to pray for one another, um, first and foremost, from my experience, um, is repenting and asking God to show me me so I can be able to help others because you can't help no one without with, with you still holding on to your hurt. So uh, I repent and I ask God to show me me to where I be able to help other women or to reach out to other women. Um, even um, giving me a scripture on what to say to help them through whatever they're going through. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Come on, give God some praise. So now this question, I'm going to ask the whole panel and just answer whenever you're ready. 
How has emotional hurt impacted your faith and your spiritual journey? Well, I must say for me that it did uh, put my fire out. And because I was too busy with my eyes on man, instead of being focused on the Lord. Mm. So I was in that place where my fire was out and I was rebellious and I didn't want to do anything. Mm. I pulled back out of the spiritual realm and out of the natural. But again, that comes with repentance, forgiveness, in order to walk upright and walk into the things of God. For me, I, I, um, not now, but before, I kept saying, woe is me, Lord. You know, I need some help. You see them. You know, I need you. You know, you're not here. And, you know, I'm just having a pity party with myself. Um, but I just thank God for Jesus that he gave me. Um, I had to forgive myself. You have to forgive yourself. It's so key, so important. You have to forgive yourself, like my sister was saying. Forgive yourself. Ask God to help you, show you what's going on with you mm. so that you can help somebody. You can't help nobody and tell somebody about something and ha overcoming if you ain't been through nothing. You ain't overcame that thing. Yeah. So we have to, you know, um, continue to go before the Lord. Ask God to clean us, wash us, you know, and then we can be a help to others. Amen. I would say for me, my experience is when um, I fell into depression. And I didn't want to hear about church. I didn't want to do anything. Mm. You know, that was that where I was stuck. You know, if I'm going to be real about it. Come on. Um,